guys welcome back to the knitting expat podcast channel my name is mina and um yeah welcome if you are new here this is not going to be your typical podcast video this is going to be an introduction to my new book which i'm so excited to be sharing with you today um i did mention it a little bit in my previous podcast episode but today i'm here to do a dedicated introduction to my book so i hope you're excited so let's jump into it gif I put together of the book and stuff, a little flip through, which I thought was really quite fun and I had so much fun making that gif. Um, so first of all, like I said, if you're new, thank you so much for checking me out. I hope you enjoy what you see. Anyway, I'm here today to talk about my book, Cows, and um, it's called Cows, a colourwork source book and patterns inspired by Persia. So the um, this has been a dream project of mine, something I've been wanting to work on and do for such a long time. And um, it was after a conversation I had with a very dear friend um, last year, I think it was, maybe it was, it must've been last year. And um, she basically gave me the, um, let's just say the nudge that I needed. <laughs> She's very forthright, which I appreciate and I needed. Um, I needed someone to essentially like shove me in that direction and be like come on Mina just 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 do it so I started um thinking about it and like ruminating and mulling over the ideas that I had because I have uh, several ideas of things that I thought would have been good as books and I settled on the idea and I've this was one that's been on my mind for the longest there's something I've wanted to do and that was to design a color work collection based around um inspired by patterns and motifs that you can find in traditional Persian rugs and oriental rugs in general. Now if you don't know who I am, you don't know me about me at all. My background, my heritage is I'm Iranian, so um, you know, Iran, Persia, same country, different name. Um, so you know, Persian rugs are very much part of my heritage, um, something I grew up with and have always been around in my life. And I, I absolutely love them, I think they're beautiful. They are, you know, they range in price based on um, how labor intensive they are, whether they've been handmade or machine made, etc, etc. And I really wanted to explore that a little bit more um, with some more modern takes on some of the designs as well. Some are a little bit more traditional and a bit more literal translations and others are more um, of just my, phys my personal interpretation of what I think those, or how I would like to interpret those designs. Um, so yeah, in the end, I spent the last 10 months working and planning this project and an idea that just started as being something that I wanted to do a small collection turned into 10 designs, 12 different patterns and a book at the end of it, which I'm so excited about, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> so I've literally spent since the beginning of January this year until now working on this project and it has been a real labour of love. A real learning experience I've never written a book before so it was a really big sort of steep learning curve especially this last section of the this last month or two from when I finished writing the written part that I had to do and getting it sent off to my tech editor then doing the edits then getting it sent off to um, uh, my layout designer who's been absolutely amazing without her I really don't know where I would be um, she really held my hand through the process of getting the layout done and then like some of the other things I needed to think about around launching a book that I hadn't necessarily considered or didn't know how to do or didn't know where to begin. Um, it was a real, like I said, real learning experience and without her I would have been really lost in what to do next sort of thing. One of my overarching goals with my design work is customizability and accessibility and accessibility. So customizability is something that I've always incorporated into my patterns over the years as and when it seemed appropriate and it was able and I was able to include it easily to provide um, knitters with the option to modify their designs or modify my design to suit them better. Whether it's to write a shawl design as a recipe pattern like a percentage where you just knit up to a certain percentage and then you change yarns etc etc. That way you can maximize the amount of yarn you're using and get 
and use you know maybe slightly different quantities of yarn than I used in the pattern or even a different weight of yarn and then that progressed to developing what I call my any gauge method so I've already published two patterns using this method the first one was the any gauge tubular cowl which I actually did a knit with me series for on my channel and the second one was the hug shrug so both of these are designed so that you can essentially knit the pattern at any gauge <laughs> hence the any gauge method. So you can use any yarn and needle combination that gives you a fabric that you like and you can knit that pattern using the instructions that are given. So, um, so yeah, and it's really awesome. I've had really amazing feedback on those designs. People seem to really enjoy that option. And so now this has been the next step. So I've been working on developing this any gauge method with this collection of cows. Um, and this is further built on my goal of allowing knitters flexibility and confidence to be able to modify their patterns. As one of the things I really want to give people is uh, the confidence and freedom to be able to adjust and knit designs, knit whatever, using what they have on hand and, you know, using what yarn they want to use and not necessarily what they feel like they have to use, if that makes sense. Um, so these any gauge designs give you the, give you the knitter tools and confidence to truly create something that is uniquely yours. Oh, it's a fly. Okay, so this is my first ebook and book, Cows. So this book will be available as both an ebook and a physical copy like this. It's a soft, softback copy. It's a size for US letter size. Um, the majority of my audience is in the US, which is why I decided to go with this sizing. Because originally, the plan was only for this book to be an ebook electronically. It was never supposed to be sold as a physical book. At least that was not my original intention. I don't know why. I just assumed people wouldn't want a physical book. Why I thought that, I'm not sure. But anyway, that was my original thought. And then when I announced this um, book, this ebook, as an ebook last week, I had so many requests from people about wanting a physical copy that I was like, okay, well, maybe I need to figure out a way to do that. <laughs> I need to figure out a way to make it a physical book. So I spent the weekend figuring it out. And so when I did the last podcast, when I announced the project, that was on Thursday of last week. And so Thursday of this week, the book's coming out. So I had a week basically to figure out and nail down prices and where I was gonna get it printed and all of that jazz. Thankfully, I'd already ordered a physical copy to be printed from a company that had really good reviews and I wanted a physical copy one so when I did this video I can show it to you and not just like point the camera at a computer screen but also do a flip through and give you a real really good idea of the content and stuff like that um thankfully I was very happy with the quality there's a little sneak peek I was really happy with the quality of the book so I'm actually going with the same company that I got this printed with um everything sort of stacked up to make the most sense uh, financially to go this way so I guess before we start with it, I'll give you guys the down, the, um, the information regarding pricing because I know that's probably what a lot of people are interested in hearing about. So there's going to be three options for purchasing. The first option is going to be via Ravelry, where you will only be purchasing the ebook on its own. And the ebook e is listed for £17 and um, there will be a discount code where you can get it also get it for £14.50. So that's um, in line with my trying to have a pay what works pricing method. Now I can't offer as many discount options as I normally do with my pay what works pricing method just because of the sheer amount of time and effort and money that's gone into making this book. But I did want to have a slightly cheaper option for those who maybe can't necessarily afford to pay the full price or to buy the physical book. So I wanted to have options for people um, in different financial situations. So the full price of the ebook is 17 pounds. So that's approximately 22 US dollars. Um, prices obviously fluctuate based on exchange rates and um, 14.50 is going to be the discounted price and that's approximately $18.75 again approximate and if you're in a country that charges VAT VAT will be added on top of that that money doesn't go to me that money goes directly to the government in the country where VAT is needed to be collected for then um, there's also going to be the exact same ebook only listing on my Etsy shop, which is Mina Makes. All of this stuff will be linked below. Um, and that is purely to give another option for people to purchase the ebook um, from another site that's not Ravelry for people who have issues accessing Ravelry at the moment or who maybe just don't want to use Ravelry. 
So you can also purchase it through my eat my Etsy shop, the same pricing structure, 17 pounds and 14.50. And then the final option is going to be a physical book pre-order plus ebook combo. And that is going to be 24.95 and that will give you um the ebook and what I will do after because of the way Etsy listings work, I have to list it as a pre-order for the book and then after you've made the purchase, I will be emailing you separately the download code to whichever email address you purchased the book from on, on Etsy. So I'll be emailing you a download code for Ravelry to your um, Etsy email address. Now bear in mind, because I have to do that manually myself, it might take a few hours after you've placed your order before I get to send you the email, especially depending on the time of day that you place your order. I'm in the UK, so if you're in the US and you place an order and it's the middle of the night for me, I'm not gonna get around to emailing you until the next day at some point. But, um, so it says in the listing that it could take up to 24 hours. More than likely, it will be far quicker than that, but just in case, don't panic if you don't get an email with the code immediately because I'm only one person and, you know, I still need to sleep. So <laughs> um, I will get to it as fast as I can, but I can't guarantee. It's definitely not gonna be immediate after you place your order. There will be a bit of a time lag between when you get the ebook download code. Um, and then the pre-orders are gonna be, so that listing for the combo is only gonna be up for 10 days. So until the end of the day on the 15th of November, or probably will end up being the morning of the 16th by the time I remember to actually take it down. Um, and then once I know how many books have been ordered, I will then order all the books. And, um, cause like I said, it's a pre-order, but the company are really good at having a pretty quick turnaround time for printing jobs. And then, so my aim is going to be to have all the books printed and sent out by the end of November. Now I'll be posting them all myself. So again, once I receive the books, I'll, um, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to sign them as well. So everyone has a signed copy who's purchased through this first initial run, um, make it a bit more personal and package them and send them out. Now, unfortunately postage is what postage is. I can't, I don't control the post office. Um, and they have actually recently changed their pricing structure a little bit. So, um, you know, postage is what it is. I can't help, I can't help that. And I just wanna make sure I get the, the costs correct for that so I don't give you the wrong information. Okay, so for the UK, if you're purchasing one combo option, it's um, two pounds. And if you order two, it's an extra pound for delivery. Um, because I know some people might want to order two books or something to give as a gift or something like that. Um, in Europe, it's six pounds for postage for one book and an additional four pounds for a second book. The US, unfortunately, is uh, and everywhere else is at a bit more of a disadvantage. It's nine pounds for postage for one book and it's going to be an additional nine pounds per book after that. And actually, if you order more than one book, I technically lose money on the postage because I can't it won't let me, Etsy won't let me charge enough for the postage. It is, it does get extortionately expensive, which is why I kept it as a soft cover and not a hard copy, hard cover book because then postage would have been really expensive, far more expensive than that. I've tried to keep costs down as much as possible and um, postage is what postage is. If you want to order one for yourself and you want to order one as a gift for someone else or you want it to be sent to someone else, please don't order two at the same time because that's not gonna be enough postage for me to send two separate packages. You will need to place them as separate orders. And the one that you want me to send to somebody else, I would need you to send me a message or add it in the notes to seller section on Etsy that you want it sent to a different address. And then I can um, do that for you. If you end up buying two together and you tell me one of them needs to be sent to a different address, then I'm gonna to have to charge you the difference in postage as extra um, because because yeah, otherwise I'll be sending both books or both copies or however many copies you order to the same address. I hope that all makes sense. Feel free at any point, if any of this is confusing or you want more clarity on anything I'm saying, feel free to ask questions down below in the comments section. I will be answering them as quickly as I can. Like I said, the listing's gonna be open for 10 days. So, um, you know, if it takes me a little bit longer to get back to you and you wanna wait until you hear from me before you place an order, don't worry, you're still gonna have time to place an order. There's no limit on the number of books that I can get. This is why it's a pre-order. I haven't pre-bought a certain number of books to be like, oh, there's only gonna be 50 books or something. Like, there'll be as many books as I, 
as needed so there's no concern with that like so i don't want there to be panic i don't want people panicking that it's going to run out or anything like that that's, that's not the case and if there is more demand for it then i will do another run of orders in the new year i just don't want to be ordering and shipping out books during december because of christmas and the postage system is always crazy during december and it's going to be even worse this year because of covid so as this book is written with the any gauge method there's not a specific yarn and needle recommendation that I can give you. So you'll be using any yarn and needle combination that you like for your projects that gives you a fabric, sorry, that gives you a fabric that you like. And this, uh, I was kindly given yarn support by several really lovely yarn companies for the patterns in this book. Um, the lovely ladies behind these companies were incredibly um generous in their support and when i emailed them about my ideas they were really on board with it and really happy to take a chance on me and my my idea <laughs> it did evolve a little bit from what i originally told them it would be not materially different but there were a few tweaks to how i ended up doing it in the end but they've all been incredibly supportive there were a few delays along the way because covid happened and um but i'm so excited with how it's turned out so um, I'm trying to think what's the best way of doing this. Okay, so I will have all of the companies listed below. I will go through and mention which company provided yarn for which sample that I knit when I go through and show you the different samples. But I wanted to just run through the book quickly. And then whilst we're running through the book, as we get to relevant sections, I will show you the cows. So the book starts with um, there's the cover it's got all the cows on the cover and it starts with a bit of an about this book section where I've written a bit more about my philosophy around knitting and um, designing and stuff like that then there's a really fun contents page now the ebook version of this is going to be fully interactive so where it says um, in the contents it says history and inspiration is on page five in the ebook you can't really see that but it says page five there <laughs> um, in the ebook when you're looking at it on a computer or a tablet or whatever you can click that five button and it will automatically flip through to that page in the book so you can click and it says page 50 here you'll click and it'll take you straight to page 50 so it's fully interactive wherever it says a page number if you click it it will take you to that page so you don't have to like endlessly scroll back and forth to find where you know where you want to go which is really fun and any websites and stuff linked in the ebook is going to be fully interactive obviously not in a physical book that's not how books work but for the ebook that's how it will work and then from then i have a section about some history behind persian rugs and some of the stories behind them uh, these two rugs are actually my own rugs in my home this one is near our front door and it's a really small sort of doormat sized rug and we just have it in our front corridor and this one was machine made it was fairly inexpensive we, we bought it at a uh, bazaar in Shiraz when we went to Iran about six years ago um, that cost about 30 pounds it was very inexpensive I mean 30 pounds is still a lot for like a doormat sized rug but it was fairly inexpensive because it was machine made however this rug here was a very generous gift by one of my cousins it was a wedding present for my husband and i when we got married um it's an antique uh flat woven um handmade rug and you can actually probably tell from this picture you can see how and you can see how uneven this edge is in the rug and there's all sorts of like if you look closely at the images and i did a post about this on my on my Instagram so you can always go check that on my feed about how you know that the beauty of handmade rugs is that they're not perfect and this is something that actually gives them value this is one way to identify a handmade rug as being hand handmade is finding that is seeing those mistakes is seeing that wonky tension it's all the things that as knitters we would consider to be negatives about our projects if that was to happen to us things like wonky tension using the wrong color in certain part of your color work um you know a bit you know somewhere where you made a mistake in a pattern those those imperfections those mistakes are actually what gives handmade persian rugs value that's how you can that's one of the ways people identify a rug as being handmade and that intrinsically gives it more value and it's always been my philosophy not just because of persian rugs but in general it's always been my philosophy around knitting that mistakes aren't negatives you know they're not bad you know i don't 
correct a mistake in my knitting if I don't have to. There's at least three of the sample cows have a pretty glaring mistake in them. And I didn't go back and fix it because I'm like, embrace it. Embrace the imperfections because we're human, we're not machines. If I wanted something perfect, I'll get something machine made. But the beauty of handmade is the imperfection. We're humans, we're not machines. That's all I keep saying to people. And I'm like, embrace the imperfection. <laughs> it is fine. It is what makes it beautiful. It's part of it. Okay, I'm gonna stop yammering on <laughs> about that. Oh, here we go. This one here I can show you. It's a close up of the same rug. And you can see here, these two spots here are blue. It should be cream like above it, but it's blue, not cream. There's loads of little things like that throughout that rug that I absolutely love that show how it's how it's handmade. And like I said, that adds value. Not necessarily monetary a monetary value. Well, it does that as well. But you know, in general, I feel like it adds value because you know that's something that someone has spent hours and hours of their time making with their hands, and it wasn't done by a machine. And it's the same way I feel about hand knits. It's you know, just because if it's not perfect, that doesn't make it bad okay i hope that makes sense so then moving on i there's a section in the book where i talk about cowl shapes and um yarn and sizing etc for the patterns so i actually have two types of cowl shapes that i refer to in the book one i call a regular cowl and a regular cowl is one i would refer to that has ribbing at the top and bottom whatever style of ribbing or it has a sort of finishing on the edges Whereas the other style I call a tubular a tube cowl or a tubular cowl and that's the one where you start typically start with a provisional cast on and then at the end you undo that provisional cast on and you graft the ends together. So those are the two styles of cowls that I refer to in the book and those are the names I use for them just to keep it simple. Um, then there's a section on materials in like general materials that you'll need in terms of needles and notions and all sorts of um other things that you might want to have and i because you might not know exactly like i said because it's any gauge sort of idea you might not know what needle size to use for which weight of yarn so there's a little table at the bottom here which gives you guidance on where to begin of course this isn't strict like me telling you you have to use that needle size for that weight of yarn but it's somewhere to begin with and you can adjust your needle size as you want to but if you need an idea of where to start there's some information there now the big thing about this book, like I said before, I was always planning it to be an ebook. So I haven't got tons and tons of pages going through different techniques and methods and tutorials like photo tutorials or anything like that. That doesn't that's not what is in this book. What I do have is a page of resources, online resources that are that I feel are incredible. They are resources that I personally used when I started learning to knit color work and are resources that I still refer to sometimes if I need a refresher on something. So those are all linked in the ebook. And like I said before, in the ebook version, these are all gonna be clickable links that you can click and go straight through to the video tutorial, to the blog post, whatever it is, um, to get that extra information if you are very new to color work and you need a little bit of help or you need just a refresher. And in the physical book, what we've done is we've used um, tiny URLs. So the URL is a lot shorter, so it should be easy to just type into your web browser if you want to, um, if you want to look them up as well. And then we have a section on how to calculate how much yarn you're gonna use. So if you're using the any gauge method, now I do have each of the samples that are included in the book. I have the specific step-by-step -step instructions written out for how to knit each of these 12 cows however if you want to use the any gauge method you're going to have to determine how much yarn you're going to need and in order to do that there's like a three-step process that the book walks you through step by step so you want to start by determining your gauge um, then you're going to decide on how big your cowl is going to be in the dimensions of your cow and then based off of that you're going to calculate how much yarn you're going to need for each of the colors that you're going to use in your cow um, to then decide you know to then know how much yarn you need and i have what i call um general pattern instructions so there's the general pattern instructions for the regular cowl so essentially you take all that information that you gathered from doing uh figuring out your meterage and all of that and your gauge and you plug in your numbers into this using the motif that you've picked but this is just for demonstration it's not for that motif in particular 
and so you pick your motif you know your gauge all of that and then you know your dimensions for your cowl and you can use all of those and plug in your numbers and knit a, use this as your base pattern and so we have it for the tubular cowl as well again this is just a demonstration like just a, a depiction of of that not to say for that one then we come to what's probably one of my favorite pages in the book the motif gallery and so this shows you all the different uh, motifs that are in the book um, there are two re repeated motifs so take flight is in here twice the motifs only in there once but because there's two uh, patterns written out for that that it's in here twice and the same with the ram's horn has two as well and again because it's an interactive PDF ebook all of these have page numbers underneath them so there's one page number that shows you uh, where the the story behind the motif and the chart is on a certain page and then the detailed instructions for how to knit the cow that used that particular motif is on a different page and so you can click straight through to whichever one you want to look at directly through the motif gallery page so then um, it goes through and then each each motif has its own page it has a clear image of the of the pattern um, a little story about the history and the meaning behind the motif and then the actual chart as well so everyone has that and I have ordered these in what I think of as being easiest to hardest and I say hardest with quotation marks because none of these in my opinion are actually hard I think they're all very easy in terms of as far as color work goes because you're never doing more than um, two colors at a time on any round sometimes with color work you can get more complicated designs that have uh, three or more colors in a round but these are all only two colors in a round and um what was i going to say it's all two colors in a round and yeah the difficulty in my opinion comes from when you have motifs that span more than 10 stitches or 12 stitches because then it's harder to memorize them so the first one if you're a complete new newbie to color work the very first pattern is the best one for a complete newbie to color work because it's a very small repeat it's six stitches wide and eight rows long and um one of the two of those eight rows are just just knit all in one color there's no actual color work on two of the rows so it's a very good first color work pattern for anyone who's new to the technique and they're kind of inc they go along and increase in difficulty as you go um, like for example I'd say the dragon marks one is not particularly difficult but because it's 18 stitches wide it's going to be a little bit harder to memorize it um, this one is another one that I really like the hand comb pattern it looks really intricate and really detailed but it's and it is you know 10 stitches wide and 16 rows but funnily enough out of those 16 rows you're, there's actually only maybe six or seven unique row like patterned rows a lot of them are repeated throughout because of the way the pattern is so once you get going and get a rhythm going with it you'll find actually that you find a groove and you kind of keep going I find color work to be very potato chip sort of knitting where it's um, really easy to just keep going with it once you get into the rhythm um, the hardest one in my opinion is um, the last pattern the evil eye pattern um, and only because it's a very large repeat it's 20 stitches wide and 20 rows long so it's not one that you can memorize very easily or, or at all I don't think I ever memorized that one the entire time I was knitting it but it's the largest pattern by far it's 20 stitches by 20 rows it's a huge repeat so you will probably always need to have the pattern in front of you the, the chart in front of you to keep track of where you are so that's why i have that one in the position of being technically the hardest it's not really hard it's just needs more brain power you need to be able to keep track of where you're at all right so i'm going to go through and introduce each of each of the cows with you finally i feel like we've been chatting for ages all right so the first up is a feta my brother modeled that one for me my family modeled all the photos for me which was really nice of them um, so this is Feta and this was knit out of Julie Aslain um, yarns in her Julette Bulky yarn and so the grey is um, Galette and the yellow is uh, Cité d'Or 
I can't pronounce French things very well. I mean, I can sometimes, but not right now, apparently. And so this is a bulky, so you can really see. And this is what I would call a regular cowl because it's got ribbing at the top and bottom and it's a single layer of fabric. You can see the floats on the wrong side. It's a bit of float action there for you. That's the first one. Uh, the second pattern, I'm gonna go through these quite quickly just because I don't wanna spend a huge amount of time doing this. The second one is called Love in Unison and my mum is modeling that one for, for me. <laughs> Um, and this one was also out of Julie Asselin Yarns. This was on her Lizu fingering base. And I used um, a main color yarn, this Midnight Oil. And then she dyed a custom mini skein set for me, which I think she's gonna have available for sale as well, these five colors. And I just repeated the colors twice throughout. So this was a really long cowl. This is one of the ones where I used the most yarns, most amount of yarn but it's a really nice, comfortable double loop cowl. Um, I do have a patch of just plain stockinette knitting in the main color for a number of reasons. One, when you're grafting in color work, it's actually a lot easier to graft in a section of uh, solid color rather than trying to graft with color work. I mean, it is possible, but to keep it easy, this makes it nice and easy. You don't have to have it be this big. It can be just like two rows even um, to make it easier, but also because when you have color work as a tube it's double thick fabric and then because you have the floats it just makes it that much thicker than if it was just plain stockinette so having this plain stockinette section you can have this be sat at the back of the neck and it just reduces the bulk ever so slightly at the back of the neck and it just makes it a bit more comfy that's the second one the third pattern also modeled by my brother this one is called dragon marks and this is one of the ones that's a bit more of a looser more abstract interpretation of the of the original sort of motif inspiration and the inspiration behind that one was very much around um mythical creatures that are represented in rugs in various different ways like various different creatures and i didn't want to pick, pick one specific one so i've just gone with something a little bit more abstract and i call this one dragon marks because it's like little scratch marks <laughs> which I thought was quite cool okay so <laughs> sorry for that interruption because Perry ran up the stairs for an emergency coffee run before he started a work call um, and this was out of yarn by Legacy Fiber Arts this one was out of a worsted weight yarn so I'm using a very a, a variety of yarn weights in this and the other thing I really liked about this one when I first started knitting it I was a little bit concerned about the color combination not being high contrast enough because typically with co with color work you want something super high contrast like that but this is really not high contrast this is actually very low contrast but I quite like it because the pattern is very sort of graphic and having a low contrast color scheme kind of makes that look a little bit softer which I really like how that turned out so the fourth pattern is take flight and this one has two examples so there's one version that my mum's wearing that was knit out of my hand spun and some farm yarn and the second version perry's we wearing and this is out of fingering weight yarn by at haynes house so i'm going to show you those now really quickly so this is the fingering weight yarn version and this one was done as a regular cowl and you can see how graphic that is and this one again is a more loose abstract interpretation the theme and the um the theme behind this motif was birds and again it's a whole variety of different types of birds that are depicted in rugs and they each have different meanings and it's all explained in the book so i'm not going to repeat it all now but the inspiration behind this particular motif was it reminds me very much of the traditional sort of flying geese quilt pattern it's not exactly the same but it reminds me of that and so i kind of and it goes you know the traditional sort of like the birds with the flying v shape that they do um so it's very much reminiscent of that for me so I called this one take flight and so this is the regular cowl version in um, yarn by at Haynes house in her fingering weight yarn and so yeah regular cowl version and then the other version that I knit up was out of my hand spun and some of that gray farm yarn that I mentioned um, and this is a tubular cowl version and so you can see how changing the weight of yarn changing the style of the cowl just the colors just really changes up the overall look and feel of the pattern at the end of the day. So there we go, these are those two. Um, then the fifth pattern in the book I, is called water. And water is one of those symbols 
or one of those motifs and ideas that's heavily incorporated in um, Persian rugs. It symbolizes the importance of water to human life and therefore like it's in, it's in a lot of things. It's depicted in a lot of ways. It can be curvilinear in style or more angular. I went for a more angular approach with mine. This was out of yarn by um, Lola Bean Yarn Company. I really love how this one has turned out. What I really like about this one is, is a, it's very typical to have this sort of like a triangular sort of motif or a V-shaped motif to depict water and to have that kind of like a zigzag thing but I didn't want to go for like a very obvious zigzag but with this motif as you knit it you get sort of a very in indirect zigzag between the pattern repeats which is really cool so that kind of reminds me of a like a river like a stream and then obviously there's the actual motif itself did I mention this was out of Lola Bean yarn company yarn it was out of her um let me get it right Azuki Azuki bean DK bait DK weight base words are a bit tricky um, <laughs> then the sixth pattern is called hands slash comb that's kind of because this motif can be referred to by either as by either name either comb or hands and um again the story behind it and the inspiration is explained in the book but I love this one. This is definitely one of my favorites. I mean, they're all my favorites, let's be honest. But I really want to re-knit this one out of a bulkier weight of yarn or even out of fingering weight yarn, but doing it as a tubular cowl as well. So this was knit out of Seismic Yarns. This is the one that actually used the least amount of yarn. I used 50 grams of each color of the purple and the gray, the light gray color. So this whole cowl only weighs 100 grams. So, um, you know, you really can get a cowl out of just 100 grams of yarn. Um, and I absolutely love how this one turned out. This was out of her Evers um, Butter Sock Base. So soft. Absolutely love this sock base. This fingering weight yarn is super soft. Love it so much. And then pattern number seven is called Gol, which directly translated from Farsi means flower. It's my lovely husband modeling it for me. <laughs> um, and I knit this one out of West Wool, um, which is yarn made by Stephen and Penelope, uh, Stephen West and uh, so his yarn. And this is out of the tandem base, so it's the DK. And I actually used three colors for this one, but I just alternated the two contrast colors throughout. So it kind of has like a stripy effect with two greens and then a creamy natural white for the background color. So that's the seventh pattern. The eighth pattern also has two versions. This eighth pattern is called um, Ram's Horn, which is another very traditional um, Persian rug motif. Oh, and the gall of the flower is also a very traditional rug motif. It's usually depicted as a central flower surrounded by smaller flowers. And again, the type of flower used can have different meanings, everything from like power, fertility, hope, family, all sorts of things are depicted by flowers. Um, and so this again is a slightly more modern take on that idea. Um, and the eighth pattern, like I said, has two versions, this ram's horn. So this one was knit out of lavender loon yarn on her DK base. That's merino DK, it's beautiful and I actually love how this one has turned out. Both of the versions are actually what I would call my regular cowl versions. This one again was knit with the grey farm yarn and hand spun and this one out of Lame de Lune's yarn. And again, this is, this is a long tubular cowl, sort of like a single loop, but really, really long. And this one is a double loop regular cowl. So it's wider this way, but shorter. Whereas this one is n not as wide, but a lot deeper. And again, the yarn weights are different. This one is more of a worsted slash bulky, and this one is more of a DK. So there again, changing the colors and the yarns really changes the way the finished cowl is going to look. Pattern nine is called medallion. And again, a medallion sort of pattern is also is another one that's very traditional with Iranian rugs, this sort of motif of having a medallion surrounded by other things is fairly common and you'll pretty much always find that in Persian rugs. Um, and this was knit out of at Haynes house again, out of her DK base. And it's, Super soft. Perry really likes this one. He modeled this one for the book and 
um, afterwards he was like, I, I really like that one. Okay, can, can I can I have that one? I'm like, yes, yes, of course you can have that one. So this one's his. <laughs> he never asks for anything when it comes to my knitting. So if he asks for something, I'm like, yes, you can have that, honey. You can have that. <laughs> That's yours. <laughs> Um, so this one's this one's his so I'm technically borrowing it right now anyway I really love this one I absolutely loved how this one knit up um, and the very last one is the evil eye pattern and this one I knit out of Green Mountain Spinnery out of their Lana sock base so this is the only one out of all the yarns that I've used that was a woolen spun yarn not a worsted spun yarn so it's a lot more lofty so this used um, I think a little over around 250 300 grams of yarn total it's about half and half of each color but it feels really lightweight for the size that it is and um, it's absolutely lovely yarn to work with and I did had a, had a lot of fun with this version so as with the other one I have a nice big a solid section and I decided it would be fun I started with the blue and then I, I switched up the pattern. I, I have charts included for this, where I have, I call this the fading in chart, where you start introducing the color work. So it's not like a straight line, but you have like the diagonal zigzag feature. And then you go into the pattern. And so this is, this is the evil eye pattern. So I guess kind of representing the evil eye, just my take on it. And so in this case, you've got the, the blue as the background color and the, gray is your contrast color your main color and then I went through went through went through and then halfway I just flipped the colors and kept going and then now the gray is the background color and the blue is the main color and goes through and then ended with the solid gray and again faded out it's so mirrored what I did on the other side out to the gray and then I can't remember where but somewhere along here I grafted the ends together so that was really fun um again like I said this one this one was the most complicated because the repeat was the biggest but then actual the written pattern as well is probably again quote unquote the most difficult one not really difficult but more difficult in the sense that it's got some other features to consider like the fading in the fading out the pattern the switching up of the contrast and main color all of that is just another thing that you can do so I wanted to provide lots of options lots of different ideas and ways that you can mix up the patterns and just give you an idea of some of the things you could do with it um okay all the young companies that i mentioned that's provided yarn support are all going to be linked below this video there's gonna be a lot of information in that down bar so make sure you go and check it out i'm also going to be running a knit along so starting today from the day that you see this video from the day the book is launched there is going to be a knit along hosted by me in my ravelry group and on instagram so it's going to be running until the end of January 2021 and I already have several prizes that have been donated by um, the yarn companies that provided yarn support. I'm going to have a whole, I'll have a full list of them below this video and in the Ravelry thread for the knit along. I just don't want to sit here and talk more than I need to. <laughs> I feel like I've been going on for ages. Um, so yeah, we have a bunch of prizes already being offered. So that's amazing. If anyone does want to donate a prize to the Knit Along, feel free to just reach out to me, send me an email or a message. Um, we can arrange that. Um, so below this video, you'll have all the details for the Knit Along that's also going to be in a Ravelry thread on Ravelry. I'm also including, including it here because I know some people can't use Ravelry due to accessibility issues. And for that reason, the Knit Along is going to be hosted on Ravelry and Instagram. So I'll draw prizes from both locations. Um, for Instagram, if you can use the hashtag Persian Cow Cow, so Persian Cow K A L, I'll pop it up on the screen if I remember, but it'll be in the description. And also knitting hashtag knitting expat designs, then I will draw from the Persian Cow Cow hashtag and also from the Ravelry thread and I'm only going to have one Ravelry thread in the group I will draw from finished finished objects only um, but I will so I will just keep drawing until I hit some a post that has a finished object um, all the prizes are going to be sent directly by the different companies who are offering them so um, I will be facilitating that at the time when it comes to it um, I'm trying to think what else you don't need to enter on Ravelry and Instagram if you don't want to you only would need to enter in one place but I guess if you enter in both you have a little bit of an extra chance potentially to win um, I'm going to try and keep it as fair as I can but it is going to be via random number generator 
and um and yes, yeah, so I'll have everything linked down below. I'll have all the different Etsy and Ravelry listings linked below. The Ravelry thread, um, my Instagram, everything that I've mentioned will be linked below this video. So thank you so much. If you are still here at the end, congratulations. Thank you so much for sticking with it. Um, it's been a long one. I really wanted to keep this under half an hour, but you guys are probably laughing at me because we're probably well past that now. And I will uh, see you guys soon. Thank you again so much for the incredible support, the incredible excitement that everyone has been showing towards this project. I just, I never imagined I would be here and so being here now is just a dream come true. I will see you guys soon. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask below. I will be monitoring the comments pretty closely once this video goes up so I can respond to questions as soon as I can. All right, take care, bye.